do you invest in a crypto project because of the technology? Do you invest in a crypto project because of the team behind it? Or are you simply investing because you believe the numbers are going to go up and therefore it gives you a chance to build wealth? We're going to be talking a little bit about cryptocurrency development teams. And really more to the point, the lack of transparency that is often found when you start to look into who is actually building a cryptocurrency. For example, Cardano and the ADA token. Who's the team? And why do they make it so hard to find out who the team is? Now, of course, as you're probably already aware, Charles Hoskinson is the developer behind Cardano. And he was actually one of the original team members behind Ethereum. But who else works on building Cardano? Is it just Charles? And if so, why don't they just simply say so on the Cardano website? What about Solana? I don't see anywhere on the Solana web page where they make it easy to find out who the developers are or who any of the team members are that's actually developing Solana. And it's pretty much the same story when you look at Near Protocol. Who's the team? They have a listing for careers. Let's see what About Learn has to offer. And of course, they go and talk to you about what Web3 is and what some of the basic principles behind Near Protocol is. But where's the team? Polkadot, it's pretty much the same story. Who's developing Polkadot? And I'm not talking about what company, what foundation. I mean, who are the developers? Who are the lead developers? Who's the CTO? Who's the CIO? Who is developing Polkadot? How many team members are there? How many years of experience do they have? What do their resumes look like? Now, of course, some crypto projects, they actually do tell you something about the team which is good. Here we're looking at Ripple XRP, or more specifically, XRP. And in the case of XRP, if you just simply go to foundation.xrpl.org forward slash team, you can actually get some information about who some of their team members are. And while it's great that this is the head of communications and a legal advisor, what I'm really looking for are the developers. And so we have Daniel, who's a senior software developer. We have Thomas, which is head of analytics and compliance. And well, I don't, I don't really see a whole lot of developers listed here. That's not that impressive of a team. And look, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Daniel. Daniel could have a 300 IQ and six different PhDs for all I know. But the point is, if you have one software developer, that's not something that really impresses me. And there's Flux. Flux actually also does have some transparency regarding who the team is behind the project. So we see here, they list team members. They have the co-founder, another co-founder, a third co-founder and basically community managers. Here's a technology lead, chief AI officer, which I imagine these are both technical roles, and the architect and community member, business development, currently conducting research at a university on the application of blockchain technologies to real world use cases. Okay, I mean, that's contributing certainly to the crypto on some level. Then we have a product director, a business developer, full stack developer. Okay, so this is going to be definitely one of the developers that's actually creating the blockchain and upgrading the blockchain. Then we have a, a user experience, user interface, graphic designer and community member, video content developer. And then we have somebody listed as a developer, media contributor and community member. And it goes on to say that Tim is one of the business and Docker developers of the Flux project. With over a decade of experience in the, in the cryptocurrency space and prior international supply chain management, he leverages his past experiences to help grow the project, building servers and growing communities. So it sounds like he is technical, certainly, but I'm not sure that he's writing any of the actual code for the Flux crypto. Then we have developer, full stack developer. So they've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have, looks like just rough count. It looks like they might have something like nine developers that they are actually listing on their website, which is far better than what some of these other crypto projects, even very large crypto projects 
will be transparent about. Render. Render is a very popular crypto project as well. Render is also one of the projects where they actually tell you who at least some of the team members are. Hooray. And when we look down through their web page here, we'll see that Jules is a founder. We have one, two, three CEOs, which, oh, sorry, four CEOs, five CEOs, and this CEO, David Vorick, is apparently also a co-founder and a, and a core developer. Interesting. So let's just get a rough count as to how many developers it appears that they are listing. So I guess we'll just count David as a developer. Chief technology officer might not be a developer. Let's just count them. So let's just say two, head of blockchain three, blockchain developer four, another developer five, and yet another developer six. Well, that's a bit shy of the eight or nine or so that we counted for Flux, but at least they have more than one or two and they actually bother to tell you who they are. Here we have some of the people behind Ava Labs and we'll see that this person is marked as engineering and CEO. And then the chief operations officer is also an, an engineer, whatever that means. I, I'm not familiar with these people. I'm not deeply familiar with Ava Labs at this time. But just going through their website here, we have VP of engineering, VP of business development. Okay. I don't really see anybody that's just straight up listed as a developer. Of course, this is the leadership team. So, well, I guess they don't really make it easy to find out who the developers are that are developing the project. And here we have Polygon Labs, and they tell you about the founders, and there's like a number of people listed here. But once again, I don't really see who the development team is. Chainlink, another really popular crypto project. And when we look down, they say who we are. We're a global community of developers, academics, and enterprise experts with deep experience in cryptography, decentralized systems, and smart contracts. That is fantastic. And they have a bunch of pictures of people with no context, with no information, no details. Are these people all developers? Is, is that what I'm supposed to take away from here? Or is maybe this person the VP of human resources and this person is the desktop support manager and maybe this person is a mathematician and this person is VP of finance? You know, like there's not that great of transparency here. Like they don't list who the developers are like what what is going into this crypto technology like who who's contributing to it and now here's the thing Definity foundation is the group behind internet computer and they also list their team members we scroll down here and this is a list of everybody they say that there's 270 or more team members if we filter just by r d for instance we see all of these people and if we hover over them, it'll tell you who they are. Like this person is a software engineer with a scientific background in physics and electrical engineering. Well, that, that sounds like a contributing factor to the development team. And here we have an, another person who has a degree in computer science and a degree in physics and a PhD in computer science. Interesting. Here's another person, builder of software products and services. Okay. And who's this person? Technical staff. Master's degree in computer science. Okay. Another person with 10 years of experience working at Google, a jack of all trades kind of software engineer, spending more than 10 years at Google working on Borgman, YouTube, and AdWords. Before that, he managed a mildly successful open source project. There's another person with a master's degree and a PhD, and they know computer science, right? So more importantly, if you count this up, there's 10 across and eight down for 80 people, plus the two at the bottom, that's 82 people. People. So they're saying that their R&D, their research and development, which is probably, you know, their, their development team or primarily their development team, there's 82 people listed. That's 10 times more than what they list for Flux. 10 times more. 
you're starting to understand why internet computer is the only blockchain, or at least the only blockchain that I'm aware of, that can actually host everything on chain in a practical, workable way. I mean, a lot of these other projects, they're, they're either a mystery or they're a joke. They're decentralization theater. They're Web 3.0 theater. They're, and I'm going to be really clear here. I do invest in things besides internet computer. I'm not an ICP maxi. Because at the end of the day, I want to take a little bit of money and make it a lot more money. However, when it comes to keeping your eye on the prize and where the industry is headed and where you should probably at least consider investing for the future, internet computer is where you want to be looking. You know, it's just like if you had a chance to go back in time and buy 10,000 Bitcoin, knowing what you know now, would you do it? If you had the chance to go back in time and buy 50,000 ETH, knowing what you know now, would you do it? That's what we're looking at with internet computer. We're looking down the barrel of what's likely to be next. Yeah, Solana might way outperform internet computer in the 2024, 2025 bull cycle in terms of price action. But in terms of who's going to win at the end of the day, I, well, I don't think it's going to be Solana or Cardano or Polygon or most of these other blockchains because most of these other blockchains can't do a fraction of what internet computer can do. And a lot of these other projects, they have very few people even working on them. That is the ones that even bother to tell you who their team is. And many of them don't tell you. And yeah, you know, if you're investing in the technology, one of the things that you need to look into is who's the team behind the technology. And the reason for that is because although sure, once the technology exists and proves itself out and you know how it works and it is what it says it is, then, then it's a thing, right? And it, it can be potentially very, very successful as a thing. But when you're talking about ongoing development and being able to pivot and adjust for future needs and to help bring on more functionality by, by adding more features, more capability, you need a team to be able to do that. And if you have a team of one person, two people, five people, you know, it's going to be a lot more difficult to accomplish these things. So you should really be taking a look at Internet Computer if you're not already.